Hi, today I am talking to Matt Brown, a marathoner and uh, accomplished runner, um, a teammate of mine. Matt, let me start by asking you, how did you get into running? Well, I got into running, uh, interestingly enough, out of being sick. And uh, this was now 12, going on 11, going on 12 years ago um, is when all of this uh, sort of started. Uh, I was uh, diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease with uh, a blood cancer uh, back in early 2008. And uh, the cancer was such that um, it, it had, had a lot of, uh, a, lot of had a lot of symptoms. Um, I had pounds of muscle in a period of a couple of months. I had trouble sleeping at night, wake up every two hours, and I'd be soaked in sweat, and I'd have to change my shirt. I was having trouble remembering things. Even my speech was affected. My memory was affected. And uh, so much energy was sapped out of me from fighting the disease that uh, I was unable to run. It was just way too tired tiring and it made me too winded to run. Um, and I'd never been a runner in the past. I'd always been interested in sports. Uh, and growing up in the Boston area, I the Boston Marathon to me was always like the ultimate. The, the marathon, that distance was like the ultimate barometer and the ultimate proof that you could be physically fit. The other, so I wanted to beat the cancer really badly, but what gave me a bit of extra motivation is that this happened midway through when I was engaged to be married, um, which will throw you for a loop all of a sudden. It's like, okay, am I even going to be here? And uh, the what I did was right to motivate myself uh, the day after that I was uh, diagnosed with cancer, I started promising people that, okay, we're, we're going to make two promises here. Promise number one, we're keeping the wedding date. The wedding is going on as scheduled. Uh, we're going to do this. And this was in February when I got diagnosed. The wedding was in June. And the second promise was that I'm going to beat this so badly that next year I'm going to work myself into shape to run a marathon. And uh, both of those promises ended up coming true uh, with the help of the doctors at uh, Edward Hospital in Naperville, Illinois. Uh, and they kept me on track uh, in my treatment. I had my final uh, chemotherapy treatment on June 10th, 2008. Uh, and our wedding date was on June 21st. We got married on schedule with, you know, I had just basically peach fuzz for hair. And uh, that was three days after the side effects of that final chemo treatment wore off. And uh, afterwards, uh, after we went on a honeymoon a couple weeks later, found out results of a uh, PET scan came back and I was cancer free. Um, went through some radiation treatment after that to make sure it was totally knocked out. But then, you know, later in the summer, it was like, okay, it's I, part two, time to begin training for the marathon. And uh, along the way, um, I, when I was looking for training plans, and well, how am I going to do this? I've never run more than a couple of miles before um, at a time. I found out about the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's team and training program and uh, realized, well, this, will, this is perfect because um, I can get real coaching for this to make sure I can actually complete the race and cross the finish line. And also the, the added element of helping uh, raise funds in the fight against blood cancers. Uh, so give it some extra meaning besides just I'm fulfilling my promise. I can actually help other people in the long run defeat the same disease that I just fought. And uh, so that, that gave it extra meaning. Um, went through that, signed up with team in training, um, raised over $2,000 that first go round and uh, succeeded in running the Chicago marathon the following fall in 2009. And uh, as you found out, it's like you finish a race and immediately when you get across the finish line, you think I'm never going to do that again. And a couple hours later, you're like, all right, that was, I could do that again. When's the next race? And uh, so at this point, I have completed 13 marathons, numerous smaller races. Uh, seven of those 13 marathons have been uh, for cancer charities, either for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society or, or uh, one 
I did run the 2016 Boston Marathon for Dana Farber Cancer Institute also. Um, and it's just kind of become part of who I am. Um, try to run a marathon a, every year or so. Uh, even it's a healthy lifestyle and it's something that uh, when you've been through uh, what I've been through, you never lose the appreciation for having the ability to run. Um, what are you most looking forward to running again once we get back to normal? Well, I think that, you know, and I, I've said this before that if you, and it's, it's frequently said, so it's kind of like a little bit of a, of a corn saying, but it's completely true. It comes from a place from truth that if you want your faith in humanity restored, go out and watch a marathon or even better run one. But the, in, in Chicago, when there's a Chicago marathon, in Boston, when there's the Boston marathon, it is one of the great days of the year in that it brings people together like few other events. It's not even necessarily about the elite runners that are um, at the top of the, the top of the field running it in two hours and five minutes or whatever it is and just blazing through the course. It's about the effort that all of the other runners put out, all the support that they get from friends and from family and just people who are spectating randomly in the city, complete strangers. It's just such a positive buzz to the experience. And uh, so I really look forward to having that experience again um, as a runner and also as a spectator when I can go out and uh, cheer again at these races. I think it's really, uh, there's a lot that we've been missing during this whole span of time. And once we can get out there um, and do that again at these large events, people are going to uh, really realize how much they missed it, probably even more than they do now. Yeah. Um, what What's your running routine like? Well, uh, yeah, during a marathon training season, I kind of, because I've gone through this enough times now, I pretty much know that like Saturday or if my weekend schedule conflicts a little bit with it, maybe it'll be Sunday, will be long distance run day and I will get that done. And I know that uh, my my training run for the marathon will will taper about or taper you taper after that but it will peak is what i'm trying to say about uh two or three weeks before the race and uh so you get a, i'll get up to around 20 miles uh about then it ends up being from the point where i actually go into you know from leisure mode which for me like a leisure run would be like just oh i'm gonna go out for 45 minutes today and go for a run and then you start to build and uh, so that whole process where you're kind of building mileage or where I'm building mileage every other week uh, takes you know, about three months all told if you want to do it right to really uh, ramp up three to four months uh, for the whole uh, real training process for me. And, you know, it, I'll run several times, of course, during the week on those weeks too, as, as time allows. I mean, I'm, you know, busy with work like a lot of us are. And so I'll keep it up, keep a, you know, a slow, slowly increasing base of mileage during the week um, and uh, continue, you know, and, and just build up the mileage from there. Obviously, listen to your body, make sure that, you know, I'm not uh, getting any injuries or anything. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I'm kind of using the, uh, this time off between large races to uh, focus a little bit more on uh, strength training and cross training right now. Mm -hmm. Um, instead of just straight running, because I've just been doing all the running for years and years and uh, decided that if I'm going to take some time between races right now, I can give like the, the little aching muscles where I've got had some little nagging injuries build up in the knee area and in the heel area and so on. Um, give those a little bit of a rest and focus on um, other areas, um, mm -hmm. you know, and until it's time to ramp up the mileage again, which hopefully will be around this winter. And what are you doing for cross training? A uh, combination of, you know, it can be, you know, a lot of, a lot of strength work actually doing, doing more with weights right now and biking that, that sort of thing. So, I mean, just 
not as much straight running. I still am doing um, the running, um, just not as it has been the primary aspect of what I did for exercise for so many years. And now it's just taking a break from that while there's a lull in the race calendar and hopefully rejuvenate the areas that have gotten beaten up more about from the running. Right. Yeah, so but, you have two beautiful daughters. Um, and they're, they're pretty little right now. Um, but do you think that they'll kind of follow you and become runners themselves? We'll see. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. they've got, got two daughters. Uh, yeah, they're, they're relatively little, but they're getting to the point where they could kind of think about entering some races with me. Uh, Caroline, my older daughter is 10 and Georgia, my younger daughter is mm -hmm. seven. Um, and uh, we'll see. I mean, Georgia particularly recently, like she's little and skinny and fast and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely, I'm not the type of parent who will push them into anything that they're not interested in. So um, I would love it if one of them here in the next couple of years gets into it to the point where they want to, you know, run, run a 5k with me and we'll both register and run it together. We're getting pretty close to the point where we could do that. Uh, it's really, you know, it's up to them though. I want them to do what they're genuinely into and mm -hmm. not just do something because dad does it. Nice. So, you know, talking about races, um, you know, what, what's your race routine like? How do you get prepared? I wake up in the morning, I raise my arms in the air, I <laughs> yell out the window, today is the day. No, I don't do anything like that at all. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, I lay everything out as, as most runners do the night before the race, mm -hmm. you know, try to not be too nervous. As you do this more and more, I find that I'm less nervous. Like the first time, the early in when I was racing, I would be nervous even before a 5k and, and then like a marathon, forget it. I mean, I wouldn't be, I'd be tossing and turning until like 1 a.m. and wake up every two hours during the night. But now, um, you know, it's, it's easier for me to relax. I mean, just, you know, have a nice meal the night before, not too heavy, not too light. Usually like pasta works pretty well, even though it's the, the cliche, it's I'll frequently yeah. do that, but not always. Um, and then just uh, have everything lined up in the morning. I'll have the clothes I'm going to wear, mm -hmm. have those ready, be aware of what the weather forecast is. So don't get caught by surprise. If it's going to be rainy, I'll bring a hat. If it's going to be sunny. I might have sunglasses. I'll have, uh, you know, maybe music on an MP3 player that I'm going to take and then have, uh, you know, just I've got what I've got ready for the morning too. Like I'll, you know, I'm having water in the morning, a, you know, a bagel with some peanut butter on it, a banana, that sort of thing that I'm going to have before I head out the door and uh, just be ready to go. Key is have everything ready the night before so you don't forget that morning and you can basically idiot proof it. Just I've got all my stuff. I'll grab it. I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I always enjoy seeing on Facebook the night before a big race, you know, everybody's got pictures of their like silhouette of their clothes laying out right. you got the bib yeah, <laughs> yeah with the yeah. bib uh right on the socks and the shoes yeah uh, yeah yeah it's uh i one of the you know talking about things with my daughters one of my favorite dr seuss books and they're a little beyond that age was the sneeches and the sneeches has four <laughs> stories in it and i always think what i always think of with the the uh the race outfit the night before is my favorite story in the sneeches is the last one and it's a pair of pale green pants with nobody inside them. And that's always what I think of when I'm laying out the <laughs> laying out the the stuff the night before the race. It is an entire outfit and nobody there. And <laughs> it is absolutely terrifying. But, but it works. <laughs> um so what would you say to somebody who came up to you and said, Hey, I know you've run a couple of marathons. I'm thinking about starting running. You know, what, what do you, what should I do? Uh, start. I mean, mm -hmm. I would say that it's really 
it's it, it sounds so simple and it sounds almost like a cop-out answer that just like well just get out and do it and put one foot in front of the other but that that really is the way to get started i mean everybody almost instinctively knows how to run and it's really just a matter of starting out pacing yourself going slow don't treat it like you're a kid running a relay race in PE class where you're sprinting. Right. Just go real steady and establish a, a slow, steady pace that you feel like you could keep up for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you first start out, you know, don't even necessarily worry about how far you go when you're just starting out running. Just decide I'm going to run around the neighborhood for 20 minutes or pick out a place. I mean, I find that um, whether you're running alone or whether you're running with somebody else, changing up the scenery of where you're running can be really helpful mm -hmm. um, and appreciate the surroundings when, when you get out there, lose yourself in thought, you know, try a new trail, try a new area that you haven't run in before that you think it might be kind of scenic and nice and um, just just enjoy it. And before you know it, you'll be able to run longer distances and run for longer amounts of time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, is there anything else that, that you'd like to share, you know, about running and health and well-being or, or anything like that? This is coming from the perspective of where I've been mm -hmm. fighting a life-threatening disease and then being able to run and then keeping at it for a long time um, as best that you can, even if you've never, even if you have never been in a situation where you couldn't run uh, one day you will be. And whether it's just from just plain the effects of aging, we're all going to get to a point one day where we can't run. Don't never fail to appreciate the fact that if you can run, that you can do this and just, soak in the surroundings around you enjoy the fact that you are able to get out there and move move like this and after after you're done you'll feel um after after the run is over one of the best feelings is you know cliche but the runner's high and it's not necessarily why you're doing it but it's it's afterwards and you just feel your your head is clear you feel calmer it gives away it, it it's provides a way to put you in a better mood uh, for the rest of the day. I mean, I've even done it. If, if you even have the uh, ability to take enough of a break in the middle of the day, if, if you're working during the day, mm -hmm. just go out, um, run for 20 minutes, come back, take a quick shower and uh, eat at your desk or whatever. I mean, it can really, I'm not saying do it every day, but sometimes it just, it puts you in a much better state of mind for the whole afternoon. Just overall, it's great that we're able to do this if you are able to do it and don't lose sight of that. Keep that in perspective and never fail to appreciate the ability to run as long as you have it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, Talk to, talk to me and um, to share your story, which is amazing. Um, well, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kristen. It was good to good chatting with you. Um, and good to uh, talk to you too. yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's get out and appreciate the running once all the pandemic stuff is over. Hopefully soon. Absolutely. <laughs>